today, we're going to get gritty. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the Recording Ninja Workshops here at Ultimate Studios, Inc. We're going to have some fun today. But before we get to that, I want to say thanks to everyone. We've had some great conversations, a lot of great comments, uh, some people sharing some really cool stuff over these last couple weeks. I'm a little behind on getting some of the video out, but we'll get caught up here pretty soon. And I would love to hear more of what you guys are recording, what everybody's doing. I've been getting some good emails and stuff and get some check some cool things out, but Man, it's community. I know you guys got some cool stuff too, man. Throw some ideas this way. Today, how are we going to get gritty? Yes, today is fun. So a couple months ago, I can't remember one of the broadcasts, someone had brought up that, you know, they were doing some punk stuff or whatnot, or some, you know, some punk style music, and they wanted something gritty. They were like, hey, these clean tones sound good and they're cool, but I'm not sure they'll work and what I'm doing, I want something grittier. So we're gonna start some gritty stuff today. And I wanna go, it's a pretty simple setup. And the first thing, for me, if someone says they need something attitude, they want grit, a little dirt, the first thing I'm gonna think of is kind of limiting my frequency range. And usually that means I'm not gonna go for extended lows and extended highs. I'm gonna try to pull things in a little bit and maybe have a bit more in the mid-range, I'm also probably going to choose different microphones. I like doing things at the top. You can do a lot of this to a certain extent on the back end, but there's something just inherently cooler about doing it in the beginning and setting up your tracks that way, especially if you're recording with your band and everybody gets to hear that vibe going down. It puts you all in the right mindset to record some really cool stuff. So first off, here's our setup. We've got eight mics today. That's it. We've got our MXL in the kick. Got my good old Pro 63 on the snare. You know, you've seen the Hiles on the toms. Even though we're going gritty, I am using a condenser today on the hats. It's the AE3000, but it has a nice mid-range. Now, where things start to get different, I look at where I can affect the overall sound the most, and that starts with the overhead. So what we have is a pair of SM57s in an XY configuration. Now, 57s may not be your first choice, but I know everybody's probably got one or a couple of those. They work really well as overheads when you need to kind of contain your high end, contain your bottom end, and obviously the mid-range just kind of pokes through. So right there is our first step into getting things a little bit grittier. You'll notice that the cymbal articulation will be less. It'll be there, but it just won't come out quite as much. The snare will be nice. Uh, it'll be nice and forward, which is cool. Now, it's also in an XY, which I don't want to, there's no rules in any of this, but I'm personally not a huge XY person. I like spaced pairs for many reasons. One being, I just think they get a great picture of the kit. However, today, because we want something a little gritty and more focused, XY works for that. And then on top of it, we have a pair of SM57s. So it's not going to be a really wide pattern. It's going to be, you know, you'll hear the space a little bit because you, we have a pretty tight pattern, cardioid pattern coming out of the 57. So we will have good left and right. It just won't be really wide, but it's going to be really focused and punchy and good mid-range. The other thing, as you can see right here in the front, is we have an SM57 in the room. Now, in the intro... That's all you heard was the SM, this SM57 going through the OCD pedal. Now, distortion is a really, it's fun, and it's a really good way of adding grit. And like the overheads are the quickest way to affect the overall sound, the next place to do that would be some sort of room mic because we're getting a whole picture of the drum set that way. And then we add the fact that it's a 57 already, so we're not getting a low, low, we're not getting high, high. It's a really, you know, forward mid-range, and then we're going to add some distortion on top, and we're going to blend things in and out. We did put together a quick little track earlier today, so we'll have at least something that we can hear, something musical that we can hear this against. So why do you say we get busy? Let's, let's hear what these 57s sound like. All right, cool. You there? I'm here too, which is good, because if I wasn't, we'd be in trouble. Okay. <laughs> All right, kick that distortion off. Hey, give me a groove. Overheads only. Mm -hmm. 
go to the ride after this. Tom's next. Ride on a crash. Boom, okay. Right there, you can already hear that we don't have, it's not bright. There's no EQ or anything, by the way. I am gonna get into that just a little bit in a minute, but right now they're just, it's just two SM57s above the drum set. So we don't have, you know, the low end, the low mids aren't big. Neither is the top end. When, it, when Howe goes to ride on the crash, it doesn't overtake the snare, actually. The snare stays louder than everything. But when he goes to the ride, eh, we've lost some definition for sure there. So we probably, if we were doing an album, I might stick a safety mic up right there, or we might just compress the crap out of it and hope for the best. But it's what you expect from some 57s. It's a little dark. It's a little dirty. It's got a ton of mid-range, which is exactly what we're going for today. All right, play that. I'm going to bring the kick and the snare. So let's play that same groove. Actually, hold on. Throw up so that everybody can see. We've got a side shot. Yeah, there we go. So you can see where it's placed. It's probably five feet up, maybe six feet up. And I'm... It's pretty much right over the snare, and it's split in the kit there. Show that, throw that other one up too, or instead of. And there's the, that's the configuration right there. So that's what we have going for the overheads. All right, now what we'll do is go ahead and play, kind of loop through some, play some fills at the end of the phrase, go back and forth. I'm going to pull the kick and snare and go one round with just the overheads again. There's our tone. I'll pull the hi-hat mic into it. Play me a hi-hat groove. There we go. So there's our basic setup right there. We've got everything. It's not overly bright. It's not even overly articulate. But it does have a certain attitude and a certain grit to it, which is nice. It's, you know... This whole recording thing isn't always about recording the perfect or pristine, pristine sounds. It's about, you know, it's about emotion. So a lot of the times you may end up using some microphones that you're like, oh, man, that's not usually what I would use for an overhead or something. But if you need to fit an emotion or get a different sort of emotion out of your track, putting up some unconventional mics for that position anyway is a great way to go. So how, what I want to do now, let's play this track. The room mic is going to stay off. Let's play, I wanna to play to this track so you just get an idea of what this gritty kind of tone sounds like. You ready to go? All right, here we go. Nice, cool. Okay, so that's there, there's our that's our basic setup. You can hear that the drums kind of because there isn't the openness of the condenser or something on the overheads. We're not getting a lot of the sheen and the stuff on top. It's got more of a kind of 
gritty rock and roll, a little bit of attitude to it, which I, which I really dig, especially for this, this kind of track. Now, there's a couple things you can do to these overheads to kind of bring some more out. Now, obviously, with a condenser, you get an extended bottom, and we have some of that, the, the extra top end. We get that articulation. The 57, we all know, rolls off on the bottom, and it's rolling off kind of on the top. Now, we can artificially add some of that back. It won't be the, the same at all as a condenser or something else because it's, there's not a whole lot of information up there. So in some ways, we're really just adding noise. But here, let's pull up and show you what I mean. Hey, give me, good. just go back and forth between a hi-hat groove and a ride groove. This is overheads only, no EQ. Now the EQ's on. So notice I'm pushing, I've got a shelf at about 12K and I'm pushing about 8 dB there. And I'm also, what else am I doing? I am pulling a little bit of 500 in there as well. That's that kind of that space where it kind of goes, whoo, you get that seashell effect that I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not pulling much though, only maybe 3 dB or so. But I'm pushing a ton of top end on a shelf, on a Trident EQ, man which is not a shy EQ, and you notice it doesn't make a huge difference. It kind of opens the top a little, but not a gigantic difference. And that's the main difference between using a condenser up there where it's going to be a lot up there and adding some of that with the 57 is it gives us just a little bit of presence up there, but it still keeps our grit and it doesn't get too sizzly. It's same thing with a ribbon mic. You know, you can push a lot of top end on a ribbon mic and it's not going to get harsh like a condenser does. The 57 actually has even less up there than, than a lot of ribbon mics do. So that's one thing you can do with that. Now, the kick drum, I am pushing a little bit of EQ. I'm pushing, a, I'm pulling some 400 hertz and pushing a little, maybe probably about 3 or 4K, just a touch in there. So that's the basic sound. Now, the fun thing, and this little guy right here, we tried a bunch of these pedals. This is something I've done quite a bit, you know, in the box when needed. And, and done it during tracking. I like doing this kind of thing during tracking just because there's something about it's a moving a mechanical, you know, knobs and whatnot. Plus, it's fun. If you've got guitar players with pedals, like today, Tao and I went through, he brought a bunch of pedals here too, and he's like, all of a sudden, the guitar player really wants to record drums because we're using distortion pedals. It gets everybody involved in a session, and it sets your tones up beforehand. It commits you to a sound, which I think is really important. Decide and go a direction and go at it. But it also, when you're tracking, you have that sound to work with. So what we have here is just a good old OCD, which is a fantastic overdrive pedal. And we're going to use it on our room mic. So let's do, let's see, okay, we're off. How? Give me a groove. This is just a 57. Nothing on. Ooh. Cool. All right. So there a couple things. Setting-wise, where I kind of liked it was... The drive is about noon, just shy of noon, and the tone is just a little past noon, and the, I'm pulling the volume back a lot, so it's not boosting. It is, you can hear it's boosting some volume a little bit. And I have the, hey, Tao, the HP, that's a high-pass filter? Is that what that is? What is that? High performance. High performance. High performance, low performance? <laughs> so it, here, play that groove again. Here's the difference. Yeah, it's a high pass and a low pass. That's what it is. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, now, no, one thing that I'm trying to be aware of with this is if you have, you know, symbols, we all know can be a huge freaking nightmare for everybody. And I don't want 
necessarily this mic in the room to have a symbol overload once this distortion kicks in. Now we have a 57, so again, we're not gonna be getting a bunch of you know, 8 and 10K, which is really common in rooms with when you're using condensers and whatnot. And we can adjust our tone a little bit here and the drive to kind of do that. So play, go back and play kind of a right up on the crash. Wow. The distortion actually helps, but I can adjust the tone. Drive. One, two, three, four. So you have a little bit of control here, but notice because we have a 57 going, so we're not getting a lot of that up there, that once the distortion kicks in, the symbols don't really take over. I actually like it better with the, the distortion on. I think it, it makes the cymbal sound grittier with the, just the 57. They were a little, a little harsh. A lot of 5.6K in there that I wasn't digging. So now the secret to this is I'm going to back this. Let me pull everything in. And I'm going to back the room down completely. And I'm going to bring it in without the OCD on. Give me a groove again. Okay, now give me that same right up on the crash. I'll start with the OCD off. I'll turn it down a little. Two, three, four, boom. Now I've got this sucker pretty loud. Need to try that pedal. Yeah, Julian. This, you know, guitar players all love this sucker too, man. Now drummers can too. Now, a lot of the times, a little bit of this goes a long way, but there's a couple cool, besides the fact that it makes everything a little dirtier sounding, it also thickens things up a little bit. So play just a hi-hat groove again. I'll start with it off. That's just a little. Three, four. It doesn't take much of this to affect your whole drum sound. It's gonna make it a little darker, a little bit thicker, and it's gonna make it a little bit, uh, a little bit rougher, which is a, can be a really cool effect if you're looking for that. If you're recording Barbara Streisand, probably not the sound you're looking for. But if you're recording some great rock music or some punk stuff or just anything that you want attitude, heck, it could even be Americana and you just want things to be gritty a little bit, a lot of the times just a little bit of distortion will just dirty things up to where it just doesn't sound nice. I'm going to use it a bit more aggressive today. So now that we've heard the track without our OCD here, are you ready to play again? We're going to do the track again, and I'm going to bring the OCD, I'm just going to leave it on from the top actually. All right, buddy, you ready? Kill the lav.
Okay, so that was, I have it quite loud right now, so it really has a huge effect on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it down to where uh, a spot that I may like it just being a thickener and a little bit of dirt as opposed to taking over the entire sound. Because that last take, it really, it overtook everything, which is cool. I mean, that's, that's one way of doing it. So what I'll do here is I'll start with it off, and after four bars, I'll kick it on and see if we can hear the difference. We play this track one more time? Okay. Starting with it off. Here we go. So even there with it backed off, when it comes on, the drums, ch the, the tone changes. There's a lot more mid-range happening there. And it just, it dirties things up, which is kind of neat. Now the last thing I'll go over here real quick is with that 57, let me turn. Again, we're working with a mic that has a limited frequency response or more considerably more limited than most microphones we're going to have typically on our overhead. So one thing we might do, hey, Hal, play me. Play me a groove. So this is just the 57. Now kick some EQ on. So I'm pushing a shelf around 80 hertz on the bottom. I'm pulling again a little of that 500 that, that kind of happens a lot of times, especially with cymbals. And I'm bumping a few dB of about 4K. Now, how does that affect our distortion? Let's find out. So the EQ is on. Go ahead and play that again. It actually, it, I, I like it, it kind of helps things out because that, remember that bottom, we don't really have a lot of it with the mic itself, so we're artificially pushing kind of some noise that's down there, and the same with the top a little bit. Now let's pull everything in one last time for our last hat trick. I'm gonna do the same thing. So we'll play, let me turn that down a little bit. Give me that same groove. No EQ. In the context of things, it's not a giant difference. When you solo it up, you kind of hear it and it's cool, but it's not, uh, I would leave it because of that, it, it, you know, because if I push that up a little bit more, it might actually help, or may add some compression after the fact. But have some fun, find some distortion pedals. I know some of you guys are probably guitar players. I know you all know one, probably playing a band with one. Now you have a reason to go steal their, not steal, borrow their distortion pedals, and hook them up and try them. The only thing you need, the, the thing that makes this all work is you actually need an impedance transformer because that microphone, obviously you can't plug straight into here. And it, you can get, they cost about anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks. And it's just an XLR to quarter inch impedance transformer, not just an adapter. Those won't work. You have to get one that's going to, um, change your impedance, otherwise it doesn't work. So the way I've done it here is I have that microphone going right to that impedance transformer. It's going through the wall, and plugging right in here through the pedal so I can you know, do this in the control room. But try some different pedals out. And like, you know, you can do this all in the box, but try to do some of it beforehand. It's a blast, man. I'm telling you, you'll get the whole band involved. Everybody, you'll start 
getting unique sounds that are unique to you guys, man. So dig this stuff. It's fun, man. Pedals are cool. Great. That's all everybody needed is one more thing they need to go by now is guitar pedals for their drum sound. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me. JJ, I know these things kind of sneak up. I haven't been very good at getting the updates out on YouTube, and I'm going to try to, we're trying to plan some things right now with some different guests coming in, so I'm a little in flux. I'm going to try to nail some of that down over the next week because I have some people that I'm, that I'm really stoked to have coming in talking about some you know different aspects of recording taking care of drums taking care of gear that sort of thing so i'll try to get better on updating all you guys until then though thank you you can always go to recording ninja workshops or you know what just send me a message man i'll, I'll get back to you all right guys have a good one we'll see you next week <laughs>